Hello everyone, I hope you're having a cracking day in 2020. I reckon everybody knows what DOSBox is, but for those not familiar with it, it's a PC emulator emulating DOS operating system and some other hardware, like for example old graphic cards or sound cards. First, it was made to handle DOS games, but it can do much more now. It supports most of DOS commands, except move for some reason. It also emulates sound cards like Adlib, Sound Blaster or Gravis Ultrasound, or even Network Art. DOSBox has been around for almost 18 years, and it came a long way since its first release. DOSBox is an open source project, so over these 18 years there has been many attempts by third parties to modify or fix some problems that DOSBox suffered from, or add features that original team refused to add or simply couldn't for some reason. DOSBox X is an example of modified original DOSBox, its main focus is more accurate emulation with some added features. Another one is DOSBox ECE, which improves some parts like OPL3 or PC speaker emulation, better scaling and added Roland MT32 emulation, which is not present in the original DOSBox due to copyrighted MT32 ROMs which are needed for emulation to work. DOSBox is available for all operating systems you can think of. Windows, Linux, Mac OS, FreeBSD and even Android. What hardware can it emulate, you ask? Virtually any CPU based on x86 architecture, from 386 up to first generation Pentium. On DOSBox X can do even CPUs from 8086 up to Pentium Pro. DOSBox usually works great in automatic mode, but sometimes it needs a little help. Games like Ultima 7, which is unplayable on faster CPUs, can be slowed down to a playable speed. It can be done by decreasing amount of instructions or cycles DOSBox emulates each millisecond. If you want to change CPU type or any other option for that matter, you need to manually edit configuration file and after each edit you need to restart DOSBox. Some settings however can be changed with shortcuts on the fly like the amount of cycles for example. There are lots of settings in the configuration file of the original DOSBox, but the amount of settings in the DOSBox X is just insanity. Also, in DOSBox X you can change some settings from menu bar so you don't have to mess about the config file. If you need DOSBox to emulate something else than SVGA, it can do Hercules, CGA, EGA, VGA, TGA and whatever GA. I bet that vast majority of users will never change this option ever, but it's there anyway. For those who find graphics too ugly or pixelated, there's also a scaler which somewhat enhances low resolution. There are lots of possible settings you can play with. For example, resolution that DOSBox tries to scale to, aspect ratio, renderer that manages upscaling, etc. DOSBox X and ECE can even emulate 3DFX Voodoo Glide. Major sound cards are also supported, of course. Sound Blaster is a must. It can emulate the original Sound Blaster, Sound Blaster 2, Pro, Pro 2 and 16. And again, DOSBox X expanded the list with Sound Blaster Vibra ESS and Reveal. Sound Blaster 16 is set as default sound card, which works practically in every game or program. Changing this option to, for example, Sound Blaster 1 actually decreases quality as if you put actual card in the PC. DOSBox does a cracking job at Sound Blaster emulation. I couldn't hear the difference between the actual card and DOSBox version. It can emulate Yamaha Super chips as well. And again, it's brilliant. What it can't, however, emulate is Sound Blaster 32 or all 32 or any Sound Blaster with wavetable. DOSBox ECE can use sound banks using integrated fluid sim. There you can load Sound Blaster sound banks and use general MIDI options in the game. On if I compare it with actual Sound Blaster 32 synth. Fluid synth can be used to load any sound bank. There are tons of them online, just pick the one you like and get cracking. Other DOSBox versions must rely on the synthesis provided by the OS.
Quite interesting is also Gravis Ultrasound support. It can emulate all Gravis sound cores, but you need drivers with all the patches to get Gravis wavetable music out of those boxes. It's not difficult to make it work, and it's well worth it. It sounds exactly the same as the real thing. Another great feature is MPU-401 emulation. You can use external MIDI device like Roland Sound Canvas or Yamaha MU LTG series. You just need to tell DOSBox which device to use. To do that, run this command in DOSBox which tells you what MIDI devices are available. It can even emulate PC speaker, Innovation SSI, Disney Sound Source or Tandy Sound System. But that's not something anybody will use, I reckon. Last, but maybe most interesting, is MT32 emulation. As I said before, original DOSBox doesn't support MT32, since MT32 ROMs are copyrighted, but DOSBox ECE does. I don't have actual MT32, so I can't compare these two. This is how it sounds. Let me know in comments if it sounds anything like the real thing. I don't play games with joysticks, but if you do, DOSBox emulates even those, serial and parallel ports on IPX network. If you're in a physical CD drive or simply can't be bothered to mount real CD, DOSBox can mount ISOs as hard drive, CD drive or even floppy drive. It really is a complete PC emulator. I tried many games and software and most of them worked flawlessly. Some of them work with some problems, like Space Quest in DOSBox X, where I couldn't enter settings so I had to use the original DOSBox to set up sound cards, but the game itself worked fine. If you're not hung up on having actual retro computer and all you want to do is play DOS games, DOSBox is perfect for you. It's a sick piece of software that can do almost anything real DOS can. And if you can't, it most probably will since it gets updated quite often. That's it for the vid. Leave a comment and have fun playing some old school crap.